This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to a dualistic new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Do you believe in soulmates? The idea that there's a perfect partner out there for you? Someone so in sync with you that the two of you feel like one? Well, whether you do or not doesn't matter, because either way, today, we're talking about Arda. Arda, or Ardenari, or Ardenari Shvara, is a deity from Hindu mythology whose name translates as Lord Who Is Half Woman. This is because Arda is made up of two deities, specifically Shiva and his second consort, Parvati, who was the reincarnation of his first consort, Sadi, but I won't get into any of that because this episode isn't about any of the three of them. It's about Arda. The actual lore and symbolic meaning behind Arda is somewhat debated, but the general agreement is that Arda represents that humanity's principles and being, man or woman, are a singular, inseparable form in the universe. Before records of Arda were even established, a passage in the Brahadaranyaka Upanishad, sacred Hindu text from around 700 BCE, describes the first creature as the same size and kind as a man and woman closely embracing. He caused himself to fall into two pieces, and from him a husband and wife were born. One of the origin stories for Arda doesn't even involve Parvati at all. In this tale, Brahma created men and told them to go forth and create. But they couldn't. So Shiva appeared to Brahma with an androgynous appearance that made Brahma go, Oh, right. Let's also have women. That'll help. But the most common story for Arda's divine form is the simplest. As husband and wife, Shiva and Parvati were so in love that they literally fused together so that they would never be apart. Yeah, and you thought your weekend camping trip was romantic. Pfft. Try getting on this level. Arda's compendium entry from Persona 4 refers to them as a dual-gendered god whose appearance is half that of the destroyer Shiva and half his wife Parvati. Arda is the ideal figure of Shaktism, the perfect god. Design-wise, Arda isn't anything too crazy or complicated. Like many high-ranking deities from early Megaten, Kaneko created a fairly straightforward portrayal. Even when compared to text and other artistic depictions, Arda is treated respectfully here. Arda is often described wearing leopard print? That's covered. Known for holding a flower? That's here too. Only one boob? You better believe we've got that! While many images of Arda depict them with four arms, several sculptures do only have three, making the Kaneko version accurate. While Arda is supposed to be half Shiva and half Parvati, many fans may notice the lack of a resemblance to either of these demons, because we're so accustomed to their more modern designs. When we pull up Shiva and Parvati's designs from the older titles, the traits that make up Arda seem a bit more apparent, don't they? Kinda makes me wish we could get a new Arda design that takes more elements from the newer versions. Arda's only other depiction in the franchise comes from Digital Devil Saga 2 as the Atma avatar of Seraph. Like many of the party members, emphasis was put on it being a monstrous weapon with fanged mouths, capable of devouring its defeated foes. But a strong element with Arda here is on balance and symmetry, which heavily tie them to their Hindu roots. As far as game history goes, Arda has been around since Shin Megami Tensei 2, and in practically every appearance they've made, one rule has been consistently in place. Arda is made by fusing Shiva and Parvati, which usually means it's a double special fusion since Shiva can often only be made by fusing Barong and Ragda, but again, those are episodes for another day. The vast majority of Arda's appearances have actually come from the Persona series. While not appearing directly in Persona 3, should Makoto have Shiva and Parvati as a Persona, the fusion spell Ardenari will be available, which deals severe fire damage to all foes. Arda's SMT2 design made its first 3D model appearance in Persona 4 as a member of the Judgment Arcana. Arda has also appeared in a couple of the spin-off titles. In Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, Arda appears alongside Kukulin and Yoshitsune as one-third of the Margaret Selection, the trio of personas used by Margaret in battle. 
Arda generally uses more magic attacks, but can use physical skills like God Hand or healing spells like Meteor Ahan. In Persona Q, Shadow of the Labyrinth, Arda appears again as a member of the Judgment Arcana, and again as a fusion between Shiva and Parvati. In this game, Arda has the signature move Prana, which is the Sanskrit word for life force. This move is a physical attack that deals severe almighty damage to all enemies. Most recently, Arda appeared in Persona 5 as a member of the Temperance Arcana. In fact, Arda is the ultimate persona of the Temperance Arcana. So, the perfect deity that represents two ideal lovers being together forever is the reward for completing Kawakami's confidant? That just proves that Kawakami is the one true best girl. That's right, I can put my own opinions into these episodes. Don't at me. I will fight. Arda's largest story role is in Digital Devil Saga 2, for the very last dungeon of the game as Surf and Sarah send their solar data to the sun, like Shiva and Parvati, the two merge into a singular androgynous being known as Seroth. Naturally, Arda is their avatar form, inheriting all skills that were learned by both Sarah and Surf. Arda leads the team to defeat Brahman, allowing the Embryon solar data to be reincarnated. Overall, Arda's role in the franchise may seem less than the sum of their parts, but still leaves a lasting impression that's hard to forget. And so there you have it, Arda, the limber lovers that last longer lumped together. Did I leave out something that you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.